contemplate these things. If you don't know this, everything else actually is a waste of time. Whatever you learn, you're going to have to discard it at some point. So better you find this thing first. Hmm? It really doesn't matter whatever plays on the surface. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you are <coughs> experiencing some crazy mind movement or extreme self-consciousness or whatever um, display. It doesn't matter. It makes no blemish on the awareness itself. It's pure. Pure. Unstainable. You are this. We are accustomed to identify through the natural arising of the sense I. And because of the capacity of I to identify along the way with different aspects of your manifestation, with the body, with thought, with emotion, with time, with otherness. And this otherness is unending. So wherever there is identification with any mm, experience or object or person in a relationship, the consciousness temporarily occupies that position as I. But it has the capacity to also stay only as the witness. It has this power to observe without identifying, without participating. Initially, it may observe actively, meaning that it is actually watching, observing, observing the movements of time and objects and thought and emotion. Then gradually, as it becomes more mature, it begins to observe not only the movement that it perceives, but the inner reaction to those movements, which are more intimate to the sense of self. Then even those reactions, which are felt to be more personal also, it also observes. And then also, who is the one who suffers from the impact of any thought, then also it's able to observe. Don't get too caught in this, no. Somehow it has to be said, I'm saying this. But gradually, its observation becomes casual, passive. It's not hunting or paying excessive attention to any thought or any phenomenon, no. Everything becomes a soup of sensations. It's okay. Occasionally, it can dip into that soup. It can focus even on the minutest detail without losing the sense of its totality, of its unity. This power you have. But somehow, the more energy we give to the mind and it is its promiscuity with thoughts, then the more your energy gets fragmented. The more you begin to ignore these thoughts, or at least, if ignoring them seems difficult, holding on to the awareness only. That's maybe easier. Just when I say hold on to the awareness, do we understand what I mean by this? Stay put. Be one with that. Stay as the awareness. Does this confuse? Is this a confusing message, you see? <clears throat> Be only the awareness. Does it seem like a complex, impossible thing to hear? No. It means, I don't say become the awareness, I say remain as the awareness. It's already here. Meaning, don't go out through the senses. Don't go out with them for now. Let them be there. You feel hungry, eat. Tired, sleep. Whatever, let that happen. That is not the trouble. That is not what's. That's not. Nothing of this is in the way of anything. It's only the mind is saying, when I do this, then I do that. It's not true. You believe it, and it feels true. Now you begin to see that uh, everything is permissible. Everything is okay. But uh, initially, it might feel, no, no, I better not go out. If I go out, I get into trouble. So for a while, you stay in. You stay in and remain one with the Self, consciously. Contemplate the Self. And so the inner power gets more strong. Then at a certain point, you can go out, and any amount of movement will not disturb you. Gradually, by and by, this stability, a stability is present. 
and gradually the interest in the external, the pull, the gravity, the suck to go out becomes weaker and weaker. Then at some point you don't even say, Oh, I lost my concentration, oh I forgot my son. no, all these things will become redundant expressions for you. You will not say it anymore. Or I may say, you will not find yourself speaking like this anymore. It will just not make sense. For me it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense because I understand within your own belief structure, your mind has created its own private mythology and it is living within the rules of its own making. So I can see when you speak like that, yes, I understand why it sounds like this, but I'm trying to pull you, smash your prison house, burn your house down, so that you can be in your infinite self and to see that there's nothing to be afraid of, you see. Because if you keep on paying attention to all these concepts, they are, they are sucking, pulling the... It sounds crazy that it's pulling the infinite into a finite form. It's trapping. It's as though somehow these belief, this belief in all these things is holding the beingness hostage into some shape that it doesn't naturally belong to. Now you are seeing all of this. Gradually, just in being here, somehow recognizing, somehow the recognition, that sort of non dualistic recognition, non phenomenal recognition, what it means. That you can, it's not recognizing something, the self, ah, I see. That. No, there's a recognition which is the negative aspect of seeing some object. That I'm not this. Whatever appears, I'm not that. And somehow, intuitively, you sense, I am that. But when you say, I am that, that is not a phenomenon. I am not the phenomenon. It is seen. Not just said, it is seen. I cannot be this. Because witnessing of this is taking place, it is already evident that I cannot be that. The witness is apart from it. Can I say something more? Initially, there may be an observer or a witness. Hmm? If the witness has interest in what is being witnessed, then this witness is not the pure witness. Again, if the witness or the observer has interest in what is being observed, hmm? then what is being observed is a reflection of what the observer is holding. So that observer cannot be the pure observer. When this is understood or observed, then both that phenomenal observer and the phenomena that it, it observes are up there on the screen of consciousness, being watched by an observer that has no form. I hope I haven't lost you. Words make things seem more complex. What I'm pointing to is wordless, very subtle, because of the power and the greatness of your being. All these things can be assimilated. Hmm? What is this satsang? It's a kind of push start. As soon as the beingness fires up by itself, no more pushing is needed. Then you will know all these things intuitively. You don't have to read any books about them. Because then mm, the self begins to reveal all its magnificence, all its mystery to itself. Presently it doesn't do this, because the mind itself is holding kind of jurisdiction, it's holding power, and the self will never bow to the mind. It says, carry on. Hmm. Once you take again your stand in the truth, know that I am only the witness, that's all. Please remember, I'm not showing you or talking about so many different things to remember that you have to keep turning pages about it, constantly pointing to this. If you catch it, then somehow you'll see everything I'm saying is just another way of expressing the same one thing. I've got a one-track mind, and it's only for this, always pointing to this, 
because this embodies <coughs> everything that comes. You will know if you need to know. If you don't know this, everything else actually is a waste of time. Whatever you learn, you're going to have to discard it at some point. So better you find this thing first. Hmm? Even knowledge came after you, because it is you who know knowledge, and you who know ignorance. Who can you be? You see. <clears throat> Contemplate these things. Don't rush over them. Don't hear them just like you're reading a book, turning pages. Each of these statements, that you are the one who knows knowledge, it came after you. Knowledge cannot exist for itself. Who is the knower of knowledge? Can the knower of knowledge be known? Does it have a shape? So just this question, initially the mind will not take up this question because of the very potency of the question. It will, it will swap it for a secondary question, an easier question, an objective question that can be satisfied but not deeply satisfied. But this question, why are you running after knowing all these things when the knower of them you don't know? Who is the knower of all this knowledge? Who benefits from it, you see? But just find out who is the knower? <coughs> who is the seer of all this world, all these worlds? Who is the perceiver of all these worlds, all these thoughts, all these concepts? <coughs> Can you point away from yourself and say, it must be there? <coughs> Everything is funneling back right to your own self. When you begin to take your attention away from the objects that are appearing and disappearing, and put it towards the subject, the perceiver of them, then you cannot miss that you are home. If you keep looking at the objects, you are constantly journeying, you are on a journey always, to the next stop, to the next place. Who is the one who will recognize the destination itself? It's only you. <clears throat> so these are simple things, but they are fundamental. Fundamental knowledge. There is not a great if truth is what you are seeking. There are not many things you need to know. Just to be pointed in the right direction. This thing. Find this thing out. And through finding this out, and whatever else needs to be found out, it will be known to you. That is the master key. But if your mind is in love with simple gathering information, it will continue. It's got an unending playground to do this. But some beings become tired, say, No, no more. Some beings are even tired of experiencing enough. My mother was one of them, I told about it. She wrote a letter to me. She said, oh, Yes, I am tired. I'm tired of experiencing. I've seen for much of my life, all I've done has been picking up burdens. I'm tired of experiencing. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I don't want to go, but I'm ready. And these are potent. Admissions, no. I'm not bored. She's not a boring being at all. She's full of life. She has friends all over the world, but she's not attached, not even to her children. We are attached to thoughts. If you are attached to thoughts, you have thousands of children. We have to look after them. And they'll always be pulling at your skirt. The one who is free has at their disposal all the thoughts, the whole dictionary of concepts, and yet nothing binds them. 
Why? No attachment, no identification. Because we are afraid to lose our identification, our identity, we cling to the past. You imagine you are going to lose something valuable. So, it will feel like a risk, you see. To be here and to confront your fears, it will feel like a risk. But as these layers they fall away, a great laughter and joy comes, replaces them. You have nothing significant to lose. When you come to the point where this question is put to you, can the perceiver be perceived? Of all the concepts that come in front of you, none of them have power without you, without you the one who perceives the concept, you see. Uh, can it stand by itself? You are the weakness of them. You are the weakness of it. The question is, can the weakness be weaknessed, you see? Why is this question? Hmm? Because intuitively you know you are in the position of the weakness. Spontaneously you know, when we refer to the weakness of all else, it's you, not another. The weakness has the taste of, I am, I am the one who weaknesses. But somehow this question is there because the sense I am is given over to the body. It's being given over to a sense of individuality, of being a person and so on. When you say I, Constantly we are thinking of person, you see. So the question, can that which perceives even the person, even the sense of personality is perceived? Hmm. Intuitively in the feeling I, then can this I itself be a person? Can the I be perceived? And you, only you can find out. <coughs> then my answers are no use to you. You are on your own now. In this moment, you deserve to be on your own. <coughs> Have the courage to be on your own. And look by yourself. Until you became awake, this world could not appear. Until you awaken in the morning, First the consciousness is present, and then the feeling, I am. Until this happens, the world cannot appear. It has no permission to appear until you appear. <coughs> Have you considered these things? Even all the great beings in the world cannot come until the light is on, and you are there. Who are you? Prove me wrong. If the consciousness is not there, if the feeling I am is not there, can anything else be there? In the line of perceiving, is there anything earlier than the I am? <coughs> the very light of consciousness and all the goings on of consciousness comes into living colour, technicolour, in the waking state. For whom is all this magnificent world dancing? Is it not for you? You are the perceiver of it. So not looking at it, but the one who sees it, what happened? <coughs> Some have found out.
some are finding out. Maybe they don't answer with words anymore, but the discovery is oozing out of your presence when you see. It's not what you say with your words, but what you have assimilated, what you have seen for yourself. You alone can see. And this question is your key into your own Self. You stay with this question and then raise any question, any doubt, any problem that you have had prior to the arising of this question. Put in front of yourself any question, any doubt that you have ever had and see if it can stand in front of you. Do it. I have not come here to entertain you, waste my time, your time talking. I want to see if you take it you have made the effort to come here. Now fulfil it. Until then you are bringing second-rate, third-rate questions and observations, tired old things, as though they are meaningful. Now accept this question. Have the courage to see the auspiciousness of this question. Stay with it, because it is your question. And then tell me, raise up any doubt, any question, any doubt, any problem that you can ever have, and place it in the presence of this question, and see if it can stand. And this is my challenge to you. Then when you speak, you can put an intelligent question. Don't keep talking uh, domestic questions, fish and chip questions. Put something that really gets the pulse going. Take a risk. Put forward that question or that doubt uh, that is throbbing in the core of your being. Don't offer uh, questions about, you know, relationship. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We pass. Okay. Okay. Hmm. What you think about? No. Please, my God. How much torture? But a question, you know. Who sees all these things? Root your attention in this question, you see, and tell me that even even death it does it frighten you. Do it. And this I offer everyone now. All the books are offering so much, so many concepts, so many ideas, so much paths to walk, things to see, things to do, practices to make, mantras to make pilgrimage. We won't be cynical with these, but you don't need this now. You have come again to the Source. If you are not clear up until this point, that all this is about you, in the truest sense, in the highest sense, that you are the one who is seeing all of this, in whose presence all the other beings are appearing, all the beings are appearing in your light. Your, yours are the eyes that are seeing, and even the seeing you are seeing. But can you be seen? Who are you? 
Are you material or immaterial? In the final analysis, when everything boils down, is there something we can look at? Under the microscope of real intelligence, is there something you will look at and say, Ah, yes, this is the infinite. Initially, there may be an observer or a witness, hmm? if the witness has interest in what is being witnessed, then this witness is not the pure witness. Again, if the witness or the observer has interest in what is being observed, hmm? then what is being observed is a reflection of what the observer is holding. So that observer cannot be the pure observer. When this is understood or observed, then both that phenomenal observer and the phenomena that it, it observes are up there on the screen of consciousness, being watched by an observer that has no form. Contemplate these things.